goes for this decorated kickboxer. Nice to see him cross over into the UFC. And a lot of people feel like if he can get on sort of an Alex Pineda type trajectory in terms of the work ethic and the approach, could be a future world champion. Well, he looks like it. He seems to have all the skills and he says the right thing. We were talking to him the other day. He spoke about all the time they're spending in the gym working on the wrestling because he knows that the kickboxing is embedded in him. He has done it so long, he can do it on cruise control. Wrestling has improved. And he said, because his wrestling's improved, guys are going to have to stand. And when they have to stand, he said, the lights will be shut off. I cannot wait to see him. Dude's got power everywhere, and that's why a lot of these fans have traveled far and wide to see him compete live here tonight. Official introductions. We go inside the octagon where we find first buff. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Herb Dean, our referee for this one, just about to get underway. All right, so here we are, Scotiabank Arena, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And I would think as an athlete, these type of rabid MMA crowds are something you absolutely feed off of. Absolutely would love to fight in Canada at the Scotiabank Arena. You understand how knowledgeable these fans are because they cheer at the right times, they boo at the right times, but they appreciate everything. This is a great fight environment. Three minutes now to go in the round. 
Nicely done to the body. And another hook landed there by Hannon Burrell. And that's, that's the danger in the engagement there. The last time I saw an uppercut like that, it was over him versus Ngannou. And you know, we still haven't found Alistair over his head. Well, I'm no fighter, but I'm not a rocket guy to that extent. I feel like I'm close to the show. Absolutely. You gotta go close the show if you get a guy hurt that bad. You cannot back off and take your time. He's right for the picket. Go and pick the cruiser. <laughs> All right, so the uppercuts have been a big part of the storyline in this one, but the setups have really been key for him. He's not telegraphing that strike, and the opponent hasn't been able to adjust. He has not been able to see them. It's a very tricky punch, especially in the way that he throws it. He throws it at a time when you expect so many different... Oh, nice double leg, yes. Under a minute now to go. Inside the closed guard now. I mean, he went right into his full guard. What does he do to try to advance himself to give him more of an advantage on the mat? All right, working out of side control here. His opponent trying to control posture, but you got to be careful here. Oh, big elbow. Oh, Parau's back to the side control now. And So now back to the school. He has only 60 seconds to recover. We'll see if physically he can keep himself in this fight. All right, let's check out some of the action DC. And how about the punching acumen by that fighter in that previous round? He does not waste anything. He does not loop punches. Everything's tight. Everything's precise. He's a sniper. We always talk about how he's a sniper. He is a sniper. And it showed in that exchange that allowed him to drop his opponent. You ready to fight? Ready. All right, round two. Unable to connect with the right hook. Starting to do some really significant damage to the body here. Another strike lands there. And now he rips the body. Connection by him there. His opponent could be out of here soon, DC. Almost done. Chins continue to hold up. Now we're going. Nice job by the defensive fighter. All right, well, that blow is fauceting from that cut with each strike landed, and he continues to effectively target that area. You know, we are talking about a guy with super high fight IQ. So when you give him that blood, that crimson red, is nothing more than something that inspires him. His opponent in a lot of trouble now. That was Kenny Velasquez's punch of choice. Every time he lands that overhand right, he hurt people bad. And this guy has his opponent hurt very badly again. Well, MMA is a constant exercise in real life. So he's dealing with some swelling upstairs, and you got to think his opponent is going to continue to attack that region. He has to. He's starting to see now the work is being done. He's starting to see the benefits of the work with the swelling that's starting to occur. Oh, oh he's in trouble. Under two minutes here to go in round two. Rolled out and now some swelling upstairs on him. Looks like it did stun him a little bit. Oh, nice level change. Drops down inside the now closed guard of his opponent. Let's see how patient he is as he attacks a submission or kick. Lands a big elbow there. Under a minute now to go in this one. But Isis dies starting to 
show serious signs of bruising now. Beautiful entry as he gets the takedown late in the round two, which could have an impact on the judges' potential. Absolutely. You want to leave an impression in the judges' mind. And when you walk back to your corner, when you get up from a dominant position, you almost want to wave at the judges and say, I got it done. Right, right. Two rounds in the books. All right, so there's the horn at the end of the round, and how about the swelling at this point on the fighter's forehead? That is not getting better, ladies and gentlemen. It is only getting worse given all the offense that's coming back. We'll see if they can get the end swell on there and try to keep this fighter in the fight. All right, back to the stool, and he is officially swole, and I'm not talking about muscles. He is swollen up top. I mean, he looks bad. It's because he was too stationary. He was on the receiving end of too many big shots. He was beat up, he was battered, he was bruised. And look at all the swelling. It Ready shows that he has taken Ready. far too many. Third round underway. Well, turning defense to offense here, blocks the strike and then... He's hurt, he's hurt. Oh, look at that. Beats a big knee. He's looking for that left hand, not there. Well, you know this is the hurt business, and both guys are compromised at this stage of the fight. Yeah, both guys are compromised. Both guys have been beat up. Both oh! Oh! Well, he's able to get back up here, but oh, man, is he on wobbly legs. Oh! Well, he misses with the left punch there. Well, you got to think he's going to enjoy watching. Oh, he's hurting him bad, man. That right hook is nasty. Oh, he missed with that right hand. Oh! Holy oh, 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 smokes! I mean, you got to be kidding me. Everybody here inside this arena digesting what they just saw. That is not a TKO, folks. That is a clean knockout result tonight. I mean, just wow. What a performance by this young man knocking his opponent out with a single shot like that. Let's get it to Bruce Buffer now. He has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at two minutes, eight seconds of round number three. You're playing the winner by knockout, Hedden, the Baron Burrell! Well, this was a show-me-something spot for Hennon Burrell here tonight, and I think he showed the world that he is still a force to be reckoned with at featherweight or bantamweight or wherever the guy wants to compete. This is a guy whose future could very well be in the UFC Hall of Fame. Tonight's win, undeniably, a step in that direction.